the synagogue. This will mean the Bet Neset, the house of the assembly. So this is the place where the Jewish people were gathering. As we can see, we will find uh, two lines of benches here, and also benches um, along the, the walls. So this will allow the people to gather. And what we can see in this square shape is that uh, it allows the people to discuss, to talk. Most of what happens in the first century is that one rabbi, or at least a teacher of the law, will visit se several synagogues and enter several villages. And it will bring stories and it will bring discussions about the law from different uh, synagogues and places. It can be as far as the diaspora or at least other towns in the area and the region. And this is what we can listen in the gospel and when we read it we can see that Jesus is visiting several synagogues. So what it allows is a discussion because if one part of the village or the inhabitants of the village is seated in one side and the others and the, or the visitors in the other side they will discuss and they will talk it allows the discussion it allows to talk and that's the main idea of the synagogue it will also help to perform an activity a communal activity that it could be the reading of the scrolls which is believed to happen in the Magdala stone or at least in this stone but before um, the Jewish people of Magdala establishes this stone and carve it and bring it here, we know that that stone that is in the corner, that it's quite similar to the one in the Bet Midrash, has two carved lines in the borders. So it was to allow the opening of the scrolls and the reading of the scrolls. So it probably, it happened to be here. And then they just move it and bring the new stone and that's when the synagogue was abandoned. So that is why we have two different stones inside the main hall and another stone for reading the Torah scrolls in the Bet Midrash. We can see also that along uh, the base of the benches we have an stylobate. This means that it's the support of the columns. The columns are carved in a very simple style with no base. We haven't found the capital, but we can say at least that it's in a Tuscan style, which is very simple. Everything is carved in basalt stone in a very simple way. And then it was covered with these red frescoes, red stucco. And actually it is believed that Part, great part of the synagogue was covered in this reddish or pinkish color and it supported a roof quite similar to the wooden roof that we can see nowadays. It allows uh, the gathering of the people, it's uh, quite a big space, to perform any communal activity in ancient Israel. It was believed that you need a minyam, this means at least 10 adult men to perform any activity. Right now, we are stand up in what it is believed to be one of the entrances to the main hall of the Beknesset. So one of, one of the proposals for entrances, instead of being just the Bet Midrash, is this entrance. Why? Because we can see at the other side the main street from the market, the street, and then the entrance to the synagogue. Um, in here it was everything covered with frescoes that are the ones that are very well preserved and at this side of the synagogue we can see what it is believed to be the Bet Aron HaKodesh. This means the place where the Torah scrolls were kept. So a question is that why is it possible to be at the entrance? So that will mean that the people will give their back to the Aron HaKodesh. Yes and no. Remember that during the first century nothing is canonical and nothing is established for the liturgy. This place is totally closed, so we are not sure if the people that identify themselves like giving the back to the holy place or the place where the Torah scrolls are kept. Besides, they are not as holy because remember that in the mind of the Judaism of the first century, the most holy place is in Jerusalem. The, the Torah scrolls indeed are kind of holy but they are not as holy as it was believed afterwards the destruction of the temple so it was very special the place where the Torah scrolls are kept because it's the law it's the Jewish Jewish identity but it's not a holy place like nowadays um, anyways this is a place where it's believed that they were kept and this will be the entrance to the synagogue 
So right now you will see that there are stones over here, but these are reconstruction, modern reconstruction. How do we know the real uh, level of the synagogue of the first century? Because there's a line of pottery that divides the reconstructed area and the original stones. So this is a normal practice in the archaeology but you can train your eye to identify the reconstructed area or the reconstructed stones by the line of pottery and different sites choose different ways to demonstrate the reconstructed area. In here in the synagogue you can see the line of pottery that it means that it was the original level, the level that it was discovered of the original synagogue.